Okay, first one, Jeepers Peepers. My middle school was built in the 40s. The gym, weirdly, had an old stage in it, and below that were locker rooms. When I was in fifth grade, we'd race to those locker rooms after class. Yeah, who didn't race in high, primary and high school? I was the fastest this particular day. Well, props to you. I started to take my shirt off. Okay, keep it PG please. PG. When I noticed yellow eyes glaring at me from the showers. This goes to pervert. Mind you, we never used the showers because there wasn't any time. I sprinted back up the stairs, freaking out, as you would, and told our teacher. She got the principal and they found nothing. Years later, I was watching TV one night when I noticed something outside looking at me. It was the thing with, you guessed it, yellow eyes. It was permanent, perpendicular to the wall and perfectly still. I jumped over the back of the couch, which from what is such a cliche, you know, you go yeet over the couch and sat there for three hours until my mum came home. Luckily, I haven't had another experience with that thing. Three hours behind the couch. Wow, that's a long time. The wake up call. When I was 10, my family moved to a new house. That's another cliche in itself. You know, you go to a house and it's haunted. The first night I woke up because I felt the covers pull down slightly and the weight of something sitting on my bed. I opened my eyes, annoyed that someone just woke me up for no reason. Yeah, I'd be like that too. But my door was closed. When I looked at the front of the when I looked at the foot of the bed, I saw nothing but the indent of someone who had been sitting there. I was so terrified I couldn't do anything, barely whisper for my mum. After moments of silence, I sat up. Before I took the covers off, I heard a man voice behind me in my left ear say Jessica your job ain't no Jessica I saw some of my hair by my ear move forward and brush my face as if someone were behind my left shoulder I spent the rest of the night sleeping in my parents room and we moved about a year later my parents don't like talking about that house I don't blame them I wouldn't want to talk about that house either never trust the basement Definitely don't ever trust the basement. I was at my friend's house while her niece was there. We took her down to the basement because that's where she kept all of her toys. You know, put, putting stuff that a kid wants down in the basement is just asking for trouble. Because, I mean, they probably don't know it, but kids, kids probably sense a lot of things. And, you know, toys is basically like a magnet to kids, which leaves the ghosts to do whatever the hell they want. The moment we got down there, she started crying and screaming, saying, there's so many people. We were alone in the basement. She's free. Moving on. The Freaky Creek. I was at my boyfriend's apartment, waiting for him to come home. His place was in the attic of an old house that used to be a hospital. Again, that's asking for trouble. It was a hospital. What happens in a hospital? People die. Obviously, yes. And it was just a large open space with the door on one side and the bed on the other. I was asleep facing the wall when I heard the door open and the creaking of footsteps. I noticed it got really cold. That's definitely a sense of ghosts. Though it was summer. When the footsteps got to the bed, they stopped. I asked my boyfriend how his night was. There was no response. I rolled over and no one was there. But the cat was staring into the darkness with his back arched and fur standing on end. Yeah, cats definitely sense all that stuff. And dogs too. 
I grabbed my stuff and sat in the car until he got back. Then I made him drive me back home because there's no way I was staying there. But yeah, definitely don't stay there, whatever you do. Casper in the cabin. I had no idea Casper the friendly ghost wants the cabin. My dad and my stepmom moved into a 200 year old cabin asking for trouble again. During one of my early visits, as I was waking up, I was 100% certain that someone had come into the room and sat down on the bed. The mattress felt like it was weighed down and I thought it was one of my sisters about to bug me to get me up. So I rolled over. I was ready to tell them off, but I was shocked that no one was there. It was the weirdest feeling. When I told my family what, ha what had happened, they weren't surprised. A 200 year old cabin, you know, people died in there. Yeah, people died. Moving on. The worrisome whispers. My office is in a Queen Annie style house built in 1893. Now that's old. It gets very creepy at night, I imagine. Especially when you're alone. Yeah. Don't be alone in something that's creepy, all right? That's just asking for trouble. Yet again, all these people are asking for trouble. One night I was alone, closing up, and was setting the alarm pad, which was next to the basement door. I always make sure that no one else is in the building before I leave, and was positive I was the only one left. As I started to set the alarm, I heard whispering coming from behind the basement door. Damn, some ghosts stuck in the basement. You left them in there, let them out. I moved closer and couldn't make out the words, but it sounded like female voices. I thought someone was maybe still there, so I called out, hello. Yeah, that's just how you get possessed right there. Don't talk to them. And the whispers immediately stopped. It chilled me to the bone. I walked with my back to the exit eyes fixed on the basement door and booked it out of there don't know who says booked it but yeah get out of there you know what I'd go to my boss and I'd say you know what I ain't working there anymore okay the basement is wanted you don't have to believe me you can find me but trust me I am getting my ass out of there no one messes with Gran when I was 12 my family lived in a 100 year old house. Both I and my mum would feel pretty unnerved while in the dining room, like we were being watched. The cats wouldn't even go in there. Again, cat sensing. And it was, it just had a horrible, odd feeling to it. One night, my gran, who was a bad was in there setting the table. We heard her shout in a, in a very, stern voice don't you dare do that get out of this house we ran in wondering what the hell was going on and she was white as a sheet she said she felt like someone was breathing on her neck then odd sensation in the room disappeared after that grand one evil presence nil the restless reflection when i was a kid I'd occasionally get scared at night and crawl in, into bed with my parents. And I had to walk past my mom's mirror to get to her side of the bed. Every time I passed it, I would see as clear as day the very detailed figure of a little girl in the mirror staring at my mom. She had atomic blonde hair, wore a blue t-shirt and green shorts and never moved. I never tried talking to her out of the paralyzing fear that she would respond. Yeah, this person's smart. When I told my parents, they said it was my imagination. Maybe they're right, but I believe to this day that she really was there. Yeah, that's why I don't like mirrors. <laughs> Keep your mirrors in your bathroom and leave it there. No mirrors needed anywhere else. Oh, the mirror beside me. Great. Over there. Yeah. Well, it looks like I'm getting haunted. The surprise dinner guest. 
My family was eating at my great grandfather's favourite restaurant shortly after he had passed away. My brother was only a year old and while we were looking at the menu he turned his head and Ely said hi Tata which was my great -grand great grandfather's nickname. Again he was really little and he and we assumed that he wouldn't even remember Tata at all. We moved to a new house a few years later. He did it again while the family was sitting together. As an adult, he doesn't remember any of this. Yeah. Good thing I'm not in that family. <laughs> I'm out. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, but mainly got scared and creeped out. I will see you in the next video every Sunday GMT time. Peace.